Hello and welcome, to this new Affinity Photo version 2 tutorial. Although Affinity Photo has recently been updated, this process could just as easily, be done in version 1. This is a conversion, of a recently released Photoshop tutorial, by Andrew Langson Photography, called, This Easy Photoshop Tutorial, Creates Stunning Fine Art Abstract Photos. I will add a link to this tutorial in the video's description. Someone in a Facebook group, asked if the Photoshop tutorial, could be done in Affinity Photo, so I thought I would give it a go. In the Photoshop tutorial, Andrew uses an image of a lone figure on a beach, but you could use a solitary tree, or even a single car in an empty street. As long as you have a focal point around which the background is blurred. I looked in the stock tab of Affinity Photo, and found a very similar image from Pexels, that I could use for this tutorial. You can also find it in the stock tab by searching for Alone on Beach, or from the link in this video's description. So once you have, opened this stock image, or another that you may want to practice on. In the Layers Studio, on the right of the interface, there will be a layer named Background. This next step, you don't really need to do, but it is a good habit to get into. If you press Ctrl plus J, on a PC, or via the layer menu, use Duplicate Selection. You will get a copy of the background layer, showing up in the Layers Studio. This will also be called Background, but will not display a padlock on the layer. It is always a safer policy to edit a copy layer. The first thing I will do, is turn off the visibility of the main background layer, by clicking on the button next, to the padlock. Just keeping this layer available if needed if something goes wrong. Next, I clicked on the name of the new background layer, and renamed it Original. Renaming layers is a good way to keep track of what you are doing. Very helpful if you are doing edits with many layers. Making sure the original layer, is highlighted by clicking on the layers icon in the layer studio. I zoomed into the figure on the beach. I have my affinity photo set up to zoom in and out, using the mouse wheel. You can set this up in preferences. If you don't have this set up, you can zoom in and out either via the view menu, or the navigation studio. Once you have zoomed in as close as you can get, you will then need to select the figure, tree, car or whatever your image is. You can do this a number of ways, but I am going to use the selection brush tool, found in the tools bar on the left of the interface. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of W to select this tool. Once the tool, was selected, I made sure the settings were set to add, and the snap to edges was turned on. I used a brush width of 15 to start with. Depending on the image you are using, you can raise and lower the brush size, as and when you need to using the left and right square bracket keys. If you are doing something like a tree you may need to also use refine, to select the branches better. Hopefully, you can see the figure is selected, with a dotted line, around it. I did have to reduce the brush size to get the feet. Once I had finished selecting the figure, I used Ctrl plus J, to copy the selection to a new layer and the Ctrl plus D to turn off the selection area. The new layer, will also be called original, but it will only have the selected figure on it. To avoid confusion I renamed this new layer figure. Next. I need to remove the figure and shadow from original layer. Because when blurred they will just ruin the look of the new figure layer. So, I need to turn off the visibility of the figure layer. I then highlighted, original layer. 
you can use whatever cloning tool you feel comfortable with, patch tool, clone brush tool or the one that I will use, the in-painting brush tool. Whichever one you prefer, to clone out the figure and shadow. The end result, doesn't need to be pixel perfect, as it will be blurred anyway. You just need the background behind the figure to be consistent, and not have streaks of the figure and shadow included. The in-painting brush tool, is found in the tools bar on the left, or by using the keyboard shortcut J. There are 5 tools that use that shortcut, so you may need to press J, a few times to get the right tool. I turned off the visibility, of the figure layer, and highlighted the original, layer. Then using the selected in painting brush tool, painted over the figure and shadow. Where you paint will display in red, but when you let go, of the mouse button the app, will then use surrounding pixels to fill that painted area. As you can see, when I zoom in, to the background, you will find it hard, to see where the figure and shadow originally were. I turned back on the visibility of the figure layer, but kept the original, layer highlighted. You could use the filters menu, and select Blur Motion Blur. But I think it's better to use, the live filter version of Motion Blur. As, the live filters, allow you to revisit the adjustment, and tinker with the settings if you need to. A filter added via the filters menu, will not allow this re-editing feature. The live filters, are accessed via the icon in the layers studio, that looks like an hourglass. When you select the motion blur filter, an adjustment panel will open. I kept rotation on zero, but if you want to try something fancy later, you can always return and try other angles. I moved the slider to its maximum, which is 100px. If this isn't enough, which in this sort of image effect, it probably isn't. Just click inside the number box, and type in a much higher figure. I have made my setting 500px as this is the same as the Photoshop tutorial. Put a tick, into the preserve alpha option, before closing down the filter. This will restore the edges of the image to how it should look. Next, highlight the figure layer. Use Ctrl plus J again to duplicate the layer, and rename this new layer shadow. Use Arrange menu, and select Flip Vertical. Select the Move tool, and position the shadow layer under the main figure, with the bottom of the feet touching. You may need to zoom in, and get the position just right, with the use, of the arrow keys, which will give pixel sized steps, with each press of an arrow key. Making sure the shadow layer, is selected from the tools bar, on the left of the interface, select the perspective tool. Narrow the part of the image, at the bottom end where the head is. The same time pull, the image downwards, this is to give the effect, the shadow is tapering away and is taller than the figure. This is as it would be, and as it was in the original image. You do this by clicking and holding on the corner nodes then dragging them, to where you want them to be. When you are happy, with the perspective change, click apply in the panel, to close the panel. With shadow layer highlighted. Add a layer mask via the layers studio icon, which looks a bit like the Japanese flag. Select mask from the menu that appears. This will, add a layer mask, that will be attached, to the shadow layer. It will not as yet, affect the image as it's a white layer mask, so has no effect. You need to make sure it's the mask layer that is highlighted, because as we add black to the mask, it will hide areas of the image, on the layer, that the mask is attached to. Then add a black to white gradient to the shadow layer's mask. 
The white starts at feet end, as you want this to be the darkest part of the shadow effect, and the whitest parts of the mask will not affect the image below. Adjust center point of the gradient, to suit your tastes. Then highlight the shadow layer once more. Then add a live filter, Gaussian blur. You won't need too much blur, maybe somewhere between 3 and 4 pixels. To tweak it a bit, you could highlight the shadow layer again. Then from tools bar, select the blur brush tool. Set to 100% opacity and about 30% in hardness and then brush over the shadow layer, mainly the head end to help blur it a little bit more. You can even add another live filter motion blur to the shadow layer, if you feel it needs it, but set quite low, somewhere between 5 and 10. This last part is an adjust to taste option. If you are happy with the image as it looks, don't do this bit. All that we are going to do is tinker with the colors of the background. I turn off the visibility to the figure and shadow layers, and highlight the original layer. I move my original layer, to the developed persona, by just clicking on the personas button in the top left of the interface. Then in the basic tab of the persona, I altered the color saturation and vibrance, plus adjusted the shadows and highlights before returning to the pixel persona. These adjustments could have been done in the pixel persona, using various adjustment layers, but in the develop persona, all the adjustments are in one place and ready to use. One adjustment used in the Photoshop video, but is not in the develop persona, is color mixer. This can be added as an adjustment layer. Changing the various color channels to your taste. I boosted the saturation to 29%, and the vibrance to 30%. Already the colors are more to my liking. Especially the blue streak running across the middle of the image. Next I put a tick in the shadows and highlights section, to see the adjustment sliders. I made shadows 54% and highlights minus 65%. Next I raised the contrast to 20% and brightness to 6%. I then clicked on the develop button, in the top left to return the original layer back to the pixel persona. Once back in the pixel persona, I added a channel mixer adjustment layer. Then once the adjustments panel had opened, and keeping it in the red channel settings. I moved the red to 108%, the blue to minus 25% and offset to 6. I believe the channel mixer in Affinity is the closest adjustment to the color mixer found in Photoshop, but I could be wrong about this.
Next, I closed the adjustment panel, and turned back on the visibility of the figure and shadow layers. The very last step is again, something that depends on your image and your taste. That is cropping the image. In the original Photoshop tutorial he cropped to a 16 by 9 setting. So, I will do the same. I just clicked on the crop tool icon, in the tools bar, to open up the crop grid. Once the crop grid was opened, I clicked on the cog icon, which is next to the cancel button, in the top left. This opens the crop presets, I selected 16 by 9 custom ratio. This alters the crop grid, to the preset ratio. I then altered the grid's size and position, so the figure was where I wanted it, then clicked the apply button. This is the finished version of the edit, that I exported and saved. I hope this tutorial has been helpful, and that you have fun trying it out on your own images. I will add in the video's description some links you may wish to check out. Thanks for your support and goodbye.